Hello and welcome to our next episode. Now in the last episode we were in the middle of talking about doing the analysis of the router or switch configuration and earlier in the the demonstration I had gathered the running and the startup configuration and I had started to talk about maybe there being differences between them but we didn't fully explore that. And the main reason was that in the last episode we were really focused on showing you the tool Nipper and how easy that is to use but we'd like to sort of finish that discussion. So for this discussion we're going to take a look at those same configuration files. Now my computer is in just about the same state it was for our last episode so we find that the startup and running config files are sitting right here ready for us to do our analysis and I've also taken the time to install two different tools for doing some differences. I have a tool called csdiff that's a very nice tool you can actually get that tool from these folks right here component software and they release this particular file comparison tool for free. And we'll look at that shortly. We're also going to take a look at the GNU Utilities difference tool, which will mirror what you would find in a Unix environment. So if you were pulling these configuration files down there, you would see exactly what we're going to produce using these files here. Also, we'll take a look and see what the native Windows tool looks like to see if that's satisfactory for the kind of difference that you'd like to see. Now, before we take a look at the files, uh, I'll begin by getting my command prompt open here. Let's just answer the question, why would there be a difference between the startup and running configuration? Well, if you listen to the last episode, we mentioned that it could be that the administrator has been editing the configuration, and while that configuration is being ed edited live, all of those changes are made to the running config and they will not be saved to the startup configuration unless he goes out of his way to do so. Now, could it be that he's made a temporary change? Or could it be that he's made a change in response to an audit or some other finding and simply forgot to save those changes? And what's the big deal if he does forget? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to go into my desktop here and into that Nipper folder where I've got those two different files. And let's begin by comparing these two files using the built-in Windows command FC or File Compare. File compare can be used in a variety of different ways, as you can see here. Uh, for instance, we tell it how many things have to match after a mismatch. We can tell it whether they're ASCII files or binary files. In this case, we can use just the defaults. Those will work fine for us. So let me clear the screen and run file compare using the startup configuration file and the running configuration file. And when I press return, it shows me what it found. Now, it's showing me the difference and a little bit of context. Here it tells me, for instance, that in the startup config file, I have these two lines. I have configuration of a default gateway and of an SNMP service. But in the running configuration, I have not just the default gateway and the SNMP service, but between those two, we have an access list, access list 10, permitting hosts in the 10.0.1.0/24 to do something. We don't know what it permits them to do yet, but that's configured here. So we can see that there's a difference between the two files. Now, in the process of conducting an audit, if we find a difference between the startup and the running configuration on a switch or a router, that too is a finding, because it shows us that there's some problem in the change control process. So it's very important that when we find something like this, not only would we point out this problem, the fact that these don't match, but we would also need to take the time to examine why it is that the change control process is not forcing these two to be identical, because there's something not right. Let's see what else we find. In this case further down we find that the startup configuration is set up using a password of password, clearly not a good password, while the running configuration is using strong password with numbers and capitalization Perhaps this was in response to some security or audit finding and the change was made but failed to be saved. And then here we find access class 10. Now I did mention this in the last episode that if we see access class or anything beginning with the word access, we're looking at the application of or the definition of an access list. So access list 10 up here permits certain hosts to take some action. What action can they take? Well, one of the actions is we're allowing those hosts to connect to this switch using Telnet. 
and that's configured for both the terminals 0 through 4 and 5 through 15. They're set up the same way. So we can find that there are three changes, three differences here, without having to do a line-by-line -line comparison manually. So this really is a powerful technique. Let's take a look at another way of approaching this. The Windows File Compare Utility, while it does an OK job here, sometimes you'll find that it gets kind of confused and the output won't make a lot of sense. So many administrators, many security people, even some auditors, will prefer to use the Unix-style difference commands. Now, to use those, you would have to install the GNU utilities, which I've already done. We find in GNU Win32 in my programs that the diff exe is already installed. But it, I have not yet set it up so that it shows up as part of my path. So how do I do that? Well, to make that change, let's right-click on the computer and choose Properties. Under the Properties, we'd like to go to the Advanced System Settings. Now, if you're using an older version of Windows, something older than Windows Vista, you could simply right-click on the computer and choose the Properties, and then find the Advanced tab, and we're interested in the Environment Variable setting. What we'd like to do is add to our path the, the uh, GNU utilities, because they're not there by default. So I'm simply going to edit this, uh, this existing path, and I took the time to actually find out where they were already, and I'm simply going to paste that in. So the GNU utilities are in Program Files x86 GN, GNU Win32 BIN. So that's it. Once that's set in there, I can simply OK this, click OK again, close this window, and now I'm back at my command prompt. Now, just as a caution, if I simply type diff now, this will not work. It will tell me it can't find the program. The reason is that the path in that particular shell was inherited from an older instance of those variables. So what I'll need to do is start this up again, and now if I type diff, notice that it's working. It's telling me that it's missing an operand. So let me go into the desktop again and into that nipper folder, and we'll use the nipper, the uh, diff command against the startup and the running configurations. Now the information we get here is actually the same sort of information that we were getting with FC, but now it only shows what the differences are. What's, what's this other notation about? Well, what this is is editor lingo that can be passed through a line editor to automatically make changes, for instance for patching. It's saying that the startup configuration file does not have this line. If you wanted to add it, you would go to 50, line 54 and append this line. Then on the next line here, we find that on line 63, we would need to cut this line and then add in the access class and the changed password. And similarly, on lines 66 through 68, we would cut this line and then append in these two lines. So it is the same information, but with the less than and greater than signs, knowing which one you ran as the first and the second option, it makes it easy to see what's changing. But there's even another alternative, and for that we'd like to take a look at that csdiff utility that I mentioned I had installed. Now I'll put the URL for this tool in the show notes because it is quite a useful tool. I'm simply going to use the Browse button to go and find the first file, and I'm going to say that that's the base. That's the one that we're using as the starting file. I'll use Startup Config. And the Compared Revision, I'll say that that's the Running Config. Now you may be wondering, why is it using Base Revision, Compared Revision? Well, the diff utility that we're looking at here is really designed for working with source code and revision control. So it looks at it as in terms of a base revision and compared revision. For us, we can simply look at it as a baseline and the current snapshot. It's essentially the same thing. Now I'll simply click OK, and we have a complete view of the entire file, but notice that it only shows us in color what has changed. It shows in blue things that have been added in, and it shows in red things that have been removed and replaced. So this is even more visual and an easy way to present the findings of what actually has changed.
In fact, a tool like this, if we had a configuration with this type of problem, would be a perfect tool to take a screenshot of and paste right into our audit report. So the point that we have in this episode is that we will find that there are sometimes differences between the startup and the running configurations, regardless of the brand of router or switch that we're using. The cause is usually poor practice or perhaps just an emergency change that the administrator forgot to save. The long-term impact is that if the router goes down or is restarted for some reason, the router will no longer behave in the same way when it comes back up. And in this particular case, we can see that the security settings would revert to an older version and make the device insecure. So this really is a critical issue that needs to be examined when auditing systems. If you've enjoyed this episode, we would appreciate if you add some comments perhaps in the blog entry. And as we said in the show notes, we'll have some links to where you can find those GNU tools and the CSDIF tool as well. Thanks for listening.